Do you think rock stars are special people? I want it to sound far from everything. Like everything's upside down. I'll seek you out, lay you alive. One more word and you won't survive. Do you think artists are always on display? I'm just saying it sounds like somebody putting a gun to your head and telling you to be happy. We got you the nicest recording studio in Los Angeles. I didn't ask for it, I man. know you didn't, but we got it for you anyway. You're not doing your job. I can't watch him every minute. I don't get why I'm like this. Maybe you can act more like an employee so I'm not late, cool? God, I hate I you! Soothe your pain. Life imitates art. I will ease your strain. Bury me alive, disappear on the ground where they found me before I ever had this career. You're in the dark. Yeah, my lighting in here is not so good. Do you, is that bad? Are you? Oh, well, we could do this. As a, I mean, I typically what I do is um, most of these I end up putting on the YouTube channel just because it's another way to promote. However, having said that, honestly, it could just be an audio podcast. Okay. It doesn't really, I don't really have a strong feeling about it. You know, so yeah, we could just make it an audio. Okay. You know, because. Um, uh, well, just because we can. <laughs> and remind me, the, which is the film premiere? The film, what date is the film premiere again? The, uh, the film premieres on the 18th. Sneak preview start tomorrow. Okay, very good. All right. So uh, Friday. I thought yeah. so. It was yeah. Double checking. Yeah. Right. Well, what number, let's start. What number uh, feature is this for you? This is my seventh feature. That's pretty impressive. Thank you. Yeah. How did let's you, you want to tell me a little bit about how um, what the genesis of the of this film? Sure. You, sure. How you kind of it up? Um, well, you know, I, I've I've always had a fascination with music and musicians and and musicians' lives, uh, mm -hmm. especially especially the. Uh, the troubled ones. Um, <laughs> yeah, as, that, you know, I made I made my second film was Memphis, which you oh, yeah. recall, and which was you know about a singer in kind of a spiritual crisis. But I've always kind of been attracted to the stories of of these these singers who are really like touched by just godly talent, but they can't exist in the world as it is. Right. You know, right. like people like Thelonious Monk or Amy Winehouse or Kurt Cobain or. Um, you know, all sorts of uh, great musicians who, who just, they just can't function in the world as, as it is. And yet um, are, so many demands are put upon them to do so. Yeah. At the same, at the, at the same time, there's, you know, there's all the, the 27 club is still happening. It's not just Jimi Hendrix or Kurt Cobain. It's, it's happening, you know, this year, this last week, as a matter of fact. So that story of, you know, these great artists who are, who are, you know, are, aren't allowed to fulfill their promise. And instead, you, you know, you're stuck with this, these horrible tragedies. And I, I felt like no one had really told that story in an updated way. And, and I thought my sensibility made, made sense for it. Mm -hmm. um, when I met Colson, you know, it, it became something, 
you know, m- much more real to me instead of working with an actor in a pure fiction. I love that gray area between fact and fiction and how they both, how the documentary can feed the fiction and the fiction can feed the documentary. And I thought it was really, uh, would be a special way to go to, to do it with a real rock star who is on that kind of path. I mean, right. Uh, so am I to understand then uh, that um, he, in a sense, created this, this, well, it's clear he created the character with yeah. you. Well, the, the, it's interesting because I went back, you know, we had, we had made a, we, in the pandemic, I made uh, this Western and he was in the cast and we, we really kind of hit it off in, in a, a very interesting way. Not, not unlike how I would hit it off with Willis Earl Beale, just this kind of strange artistic connection that, that didn't need a backstory. It just kind of was this great connection. I went back and I, after the film and I wrote a, uh, I wrote a draft in three weeks and sent it to him. It was pure fiction. It wasn't, it wasn't based on actual experiences of his, but yet there, there were things in the script that he had experienced himself. So there was this great creative connection. And then of course, you know, the script is just a blueprint to start. And then he, his collaboration and his choices and his, his ideas, uh, I of course folded into the, to the fabric of it because authenticity matters more than than my writing you know what what you don't you don't bring us you don't make a script you make a film yeah and i i can see having seen all i'm pretty sure most if not all your films that you have a high um emphasis or an emphasis in a, uh, on um being as close to uh truthfulness maybe or real yeah <laughs> As it yeah. get, considering it's not necessarily this is not a documentary, right? Well, is so Colson, who is of course known as uh, in some circles as Machine Gun Kelly, um, well, he he's you know you, one looks at his lifestyle through the pop culture prism and and and, and everything, and one just assumes this guy is uh, you know all into the trappings and and um, you know maybe but but go deeper because uh you you see is there's a soul is there there is a soulfulness there there is a and an interest in uh in the same kind of priorities that you have as a filmmaker as a storyteller he has yeah, i mean even if he may not have as much experience or you're just doing it right well i i think i th- i think the thing what, what comes you know, when you're a giant global rock star, I mean, it, like you, <laughs> not like me, but but uh, you know, I think you get you you can get a bad rap as just someone who's who's superficial and glossy and and maybe not even talented. And I think one of the things is is that Colson is uh, Machine Gun Kelly is this machine. It is this this entity that he feeds and and that is part of that is fame and part of that is the 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 that world of 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 grandiose kind of liberty and and yeah exactly but 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 within all that you don't get to that place without being a tremendous artist and without you know also being being able to expose yourself and be vulnerable and 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 kind of expose your life to uh, a lot of people's um, a lot of people's uh, uh, possible rejection, and so one of the things that we both really share as artists is that we don't want to do it part of the way. We don't want to hide behind anything. What we want to do is go all the way and be vulnerable, swim out into the deep end as far as we can, and, and come back changed. And that's what I've done with every one of my movies. This was no different, but. I think the stakes were a little higher because, you know, a lot of people will see this movie and be like, oh, Machine Gun Kelly is a drug addict or, oh, Machine Gun Kelly like runs out in traffic and almost gets hit by cars or whatever it is. But it, it is it is this idea of this mixture of of him, him. Exposing himself to that yeah. to that to those views and to that risk, but it's really a tremendous performance. It's like yeah. Kurt Cobain didn't play Kurt Cobain in last days, you know. Billy yeah. Holiday didn't play Billy Holiday in Lady Sings the Blues. This is something that's much closer and is a, a real testament to his ability as a musician, but also as an actor. 
But you know what happens when you swim out to deeper waters? What can happen? You know, you can uh, get tired and drown. <laughs> There's or always get, that. Or you can get attacked by, uh, you know, a shark or something. Yeah. My point is, or you can be sucked under, a, you know, a, a wave or, you know, for sure. I, I, mean, I guess there's dangers and there's um and putting yourself out there um you know for the world to see and to be authentic and everything else can can also be uh, uh um you know can be hard it can be exhausting and it you could feel very uh sometimes not, and then celebrity of course as well put on top of that where you're not sure who your real friends are or right. who really cares about has you in their interest or just the money you're making right um it, and and then you have the, the as you said the 27 club you know there's all this there's all this risk involved and i think i mean i i i can't speak for him but i i can say like the deep end is the only place i want to swim even even with the risk of drowning just because uh, you know, you you have your Netflix queue and your Hulu queue and your Amazon queue and your Shutter queue. And I mean, there's there's just tons of content. There's tons of content. Some of it is brilliant and amazing. Some of it not so much. But my whole goal is to make something that's not disposable mm -hmm. um, and something that you can pick up 30 years from now and, and still find interest that maybe it's still alive in some way. Um, and that's what I aspire to do. And I don't think you do that by hiding behind genre or or uh thinking okay what what is the what is you know what does the Netflix audience want for this right. you just have to you just have to go and kind oh. of throw yourself throw yourself on the floor as far as the tra the fame and and all of that that goes with it i mean that that's what it interests me as well about this movie is that the, the movie is 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 not necessarily a cautionary tale the movie is about the creative process the simple, beautiful, creative process of trying to make a song while the whole world is staring at you or trolling you or telling you what to do, the industry, your family, the There's drugs, the alcohol, the dealers, yeah. all that, all those pressures take you away from just that simple thing that got you there in the first place. The work. The work. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and it's called Taurus and it's opening Friday, November 18th. Yeah. Uh, take your family for Thanksgiving. Well, okay. So it's not a children's movie, but <laughs> look, you take know. your teenage kids. Yeah. Right. Exactly. But sh you know, um, yeah, I think, you know, your, if your teenager is, I mean, we shouldn't focus so much on this, but if your teenager is uh, thoughtful and understands, you know, kind of mature in that way then i think it's not a, it's certainly not an inappropriate film to see right uh, you know it could actually have a positive impact in the way that a lot of movies just sort of are empty you know right. um, uh and how, when did you uh what's your back i don't even think i know much that, about your backstory then when did you become interested in film yourself like telling stories on film was that you was that the way you saw yourself from the start or did you start with a different plan well, interestingly enough, I, I, I thought I would go to grad school for musicology. <laughs> okay. I was really I was really interested in music and musicians lives and the stories of music. But <laughs> when I got to grad school, I took an ethnographic film class and I got a Bolex camera in my hand. Wow. And it was just like a natural progression from there. I just felt like telling those kind of stories. You know, first you have the visuals and then you have the the music and the sound design and the editing and all these all these things that I felt really just just a, a natural fit. Um, so I, I moved to New York and got a job as a as a commercial PA production assistant, learned the business from really the ground up and and learned the city of New York right. riding right. around in a truck. And you're parking um, cars and you're waiting. Yeah, do it just holding, doing holding parking spaces and you're do whatever you got to do. Yeah. And going all to all these random prop houses or equipment houses or locations mm -hmm. all over the city. So I really learned a lot about New York in my first few years through the film, through being on film sets. And then, you know, I started making short films and I, I, I went from there and uh, it ended up uh, at Getty Images, which is uh, in the footage department. So in a way I had like this corporate budget to make short films and they just wanted the stock the stock footage so i really honed this kind of style of like small crew 
no dialogue, you know, real people. And uh, I pitched I'm them. I pitched them a movie about teen teen lifestyle, and they said, uh, "We're not going to pay for it, but you can do it." And that's how I made Pavilion. Oh wow! That so that that's your first feature. Yep. Oh, okay. So I was there from the start. Yeah. Yeah. What year was, what year was that? 2011. It played uh, South by Southwest. Right. Okay. Wow. So you've been pretty. Actually, have been pretty prolific, haven't you? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, this is this is my business. I do. I I write yeah. script, I write scripts and I polish scripts. But this is, you know, this is my work. I don't do commercials. I don't teach right now. So, uh, and also, you know, the thing about it is, like, actors work a lot. You know, good actors work a lot. Good DPs work a lot. Good crew members right. they work a ton. A director gets on set maybe once a year if you're lucky. You know, maybe once every two or three years. So it's, 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 it's harder for a director to practice their craft and get better. So I just feel like every time I get the opportunity, I just want to get better. I just want to try new things. I want to see what works, what doesn't work, tell more stories, fall on my face, get back up. And, 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 and like we said earlier, just do the work. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess uh, doing like work for hire does provide you the opportunities at least to, you know, do work that will you know maybe you, you we're just opportunities to learn and to you know apply your craft and absolutely uh, everything's a, everything's a learning experience but, mm-hmm. and then you're sacrificing working on a story that's original perhaps and putting it off or it's taking longer or you're you know i don't know yeah it's i mean it's a weird it's a weird balance it's like it's like well, it's like anything i mean you you want to spend your time doing your own stuff but if your own stuff the goal is to make your own stuff something viable for, you know, an industry and audience at the same time as not selling, you know, selling your soul. But every once in a while, selling your soul and putting some food on the table and putting some money in the bank is, you know, not selling your soul. It's doing your job. So, right. Um, and, you know, yeah. Yeah. Well, it might be different in a country if, if the, you know, if you got some uh, underwriting and some sub, you know, some, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm totally envious of a lot of the European and Asian filmmakers who, you know, you see on their credits, the, all the different foundations and, and, and like cinema grants that they're able to get in America. It's like, it does seem like you're kind of beholden to the rich folk. Yeah. You, know, you got to find that money. Got to get, got to meet those dentists. <laughs> you know, but I was, but I, you know, even still, I do talk like, what was I talking to somebody from what country? Um, I can't remember. But it was it wasn't like you know they yeah they 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 raised the money for their they they would go privately and raise their money, so you know, um, it's 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 not only here but yeah considering yeah. the considering the amount of a film that's made here you'd think I think places like Netflix and Hulu and these giants and the studios should be should be creating um, you know or pressuring the government lobbying or whatever they got to do to. Right you know, to help filmmakers, we need a new, and you know, so you get, you, you, you charge young filmmakers, you know, how many tens of thousands of dollars uh, to go to film school, but then they're on their own. I mean, it's just right. Like, right. And you have to work within the parameters of what, what those, you know, what those streamers want, you know, and what, yeah. what, what they think that what the algorithm wants instead of what the artist wants, which is you know, complicated. Yeah. And I guess to some degree, it's true if the money is coming. All, and also, I mean, from the government money could have that to some degree, right? There's always parameters, I suppose. Of course. So maybe even though it's the most difficult, you might have the most freedom in some ways, independently raising money. Uh, certainly, certainly in the case of Taurus, like, you know, I, I, I didn't officially have in my contract final cut, but that cut is 100% mine. You know, I didn't make yeah. any... I didn't have to make any concessions. The producers and financiers were, you know, were sold on on the specific movie that I wanted to make. Coulson wanted to make the same movie. So, and it's it's great when you're on the same side as a, a kind of powerful entity like Coulson because he could protect me in certain situations. Right. Exactly. That, you know, were risky. If he if he were on if he was on my side, then I, I had less to worry about. Right. We more more that most of the time we think about um, how having you know a famous person in your film is, is is you know it can help you of course find producers and find money, but we don't think of uh, how you also have an incredible uh, you know wall there like you know and somebody 
look, you know, sort of helping protect you and your. Yeah. Yeah. It makes a, it makes a big difference. And if you're on the other side, if you guys are clashing and on the other side, it can be, I'm sure it can be a, a really harrowing experience, but uh, Col- <laughs> Colson was nothing but supportive of, 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 of not, not every idea I had in any way, but we both wanted to make the same film. So the collaboration had a clear path. Got it. Well, it's the name of the film is Taurus. It's uh, being released by RLJE Films. Yeah. And it will be in theaters and on, on demand and digital as of this Friday, November 18th. It's directed, both directed and written by our guest today, Tim Hunt. And it's among its cast is amongst its cast is Colson Baker, sometimes known as Machine Gun Kelly. Not in this film, though. Mm-hmm. Maddie Hassan and Demetrius Meech. Right? Anybody else we want to mention? or? Um, well, Megan Fox and Harry. Ruby Rose are in it, too. Right. Well, it's a really good, really amazing film. And kudos to you for continuing the good fight, <laughs> making truly independent films. You need to come on here more because... That's what this show is kind of about, you know. At the end well, of the I appreciate the support and and in and, and having you interview me and 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 having you kind of know the backstory a little bit too. Yeah, no, I'm I'm really glad for it, and uh, thanks for, you know, carving out some of your your private time tonight. And of course, um, you know, and one day we'll do uh, we'll do it again. Uh, you know, we'll do the retro the, the retrospective. <laughs> so, you really, I, I, well, I won't hold my breath, but it's uh, uh, but if it's on you for that. Uh, I will, but you, you have you had you must have had right some sort of retrospectives at some film societies or some film. Yeah, I've had a couple. I've had a couple, uh, both in Europe. Oh, well, um, yeah, which well, is which makes sense and yeah, makes sense and is enjoyable and has uh, has has been uh, has been just really great to to be able to see. Uh, you know, I get to I, I went back and watched Pavilion and in. in uh, and Memphis and certain things. And I hadn't seen them in a long time. And I really, I, I, I still felt really strongly about them. Still felt really positive about all the work. So. Right. Well, that's what happens when you make something that's like, you know, authentic, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully. You're welcome. Um, I'll let you get on with your evening though, but uh, I look forward to hearing all the rays and the praise. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, Finger, fingers crossed, fingers yeah, crossed. Fingers crossed. I, but I, I'm not holding my breath again on that. Well, anyway, I'm sure, I'm sure, no, I'm sure um, people, people that choose to see this, your film, it's a dark story, but it's, it's definitely one worth seeing and people will love the cast. And there's some really wonderful light moments in the film too, and great music, yeah. and great, fantastic music in it. I mean, there's, you know, and you cannot, you'll ne- and people will not be able to figure out how it's going to go. I mean, you know, it's the advantage of the, of stories like this. Yep, great. How do you know how your life is going to go? All exactly. The you never know what's going to happen when you turn the corner. <laughs> uh, yeah. So anyway, great to talk to you. Thanks, Adam. All right. Have a good evening. See ya. All right. You bet. Bye. Bye.